parametric integration, if you remember from our memory page, we've pretty much dealt with everything that is here now, just apart from these two things that we've got left to think about. So we're going to look at parametric integration, and then we're going to look at differential equations. Pretty quickly, you should be able to just see parametric integration. Um, all you do is you take the y, you multiply it by dx dt, and then you integrate it with respect to t. That's all we're going to be doing here. There's nothing that's going to be like crazy different. I'm going to explain why this thing is true. In fact, you probably look at this. You should be able to work out why that thing is true yourself. So um, I've got an example here. Suppose we have the following parametric equation. So we've got x is t squared, y is t plus 1. And to find the area under the curve, what we usually want to do when you're trying to find the area under a curve is you try and integrate y with respect to x. But the problem is that y is in terms of t and not in terms of x. So imagine trying to integrate y but with respect to x. We've got a bit of a problem there because we want the variables to be matching each other. And t, t is obviously a, a, something that's varying here. So we can't just do that integration. Now, in order to change this, we just do a little trick. Okay? Instead of doing um, integrating y with respect to x, we multiply y by dx dt, and that allows us to integrate it with respect to t. Can you see what might happen in that bit that I've just circled in blue there? The dt's cancel out. So what we actually are saying here is these things are equivalent. These two things are equivalent to each other because the dt's like cancel each other out. So the trick is if you get the y part, if you multiply it by the derivative of x, x differentiated with respect to t, that's also going to be in terms of t, because remember, x is written in terms of t. So this is in terms of t, this is in terms of t. Great, we're integrating it with respect to t. So it's just about, it's a bit like, um, hopefully it reminds us a little bit of that topic where we did connected rates of change, where we tried to like get all of the things to cancel out with each other. It's that same idea about connecting these things uh, connecting these things up. So um, let's actually do this. It says determine the area bound between the curve with parametric equations x equals t squared and y equals t plus 1, the x-axis and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 3. So really what they're wanting us to work out, if this was a normal question, it would be integrating between 0 and 3, we would integrate y with respect to x. But ours is parametric, so we need to make sure that we're going to be doing this correctly. Step one, find out what dx dt is, because we're going to need to use dx dt in this example. So we have x is t squared, silly thing, and y is t plus 1. The thing we need to remember is it will be dx dt. dx dt is 2t. Two You'll notice here that the limits for the x values are between 0 and 3. But the limits always have to match what you're integrating with respect to. So, and this, this should remind us of what we did with substitution. You know, we did a substitution, we had to change the limits. So for step two, we're also going to have to change out what the limits were. Now, previously, the x limits were uh, 3 and 0. So our t limits are going to be... No, root three. three and zero, OK? Because we're solving this equation. We're saying if x is three, t is going to be equal to three here, OK? Um, obviously, t could have been positive root three or negative root three. Usually, the question should have said where t is greater than zero. The question should have given you the, uh, the range of values that you can expect to be subbing in for t. So this thing that we have, integrating between 0 and 3 of y dx, we can change that. Instead of it being between 0 and 3, it's going to be between 0 and root 3. And instead of it being y, we're going to use t plus 1. And because we want to do it with respect to t instead of with respect to x, we need to multiply by 2t. And now we can do it with respect to t. And that's it. That's integration, that's parametric integration. So all it is is this thing that you've got here that you multiply by the derivative of x and you change the limits so that the limits match dt at the end. 
And obviously, we'll do the question. We obviously have to finish the question off. So to integrate this, what should I do? Just expand it. Good. I was just wondering if anyone was going to be like, yeah, it's going to be, um, it's going to be by parts. <laughs> which you technically could if you really wanted to. you probably do this by parts. So we're going to be integrating 2t squared plus 2t with respect to t. And I don't even know why I'm going to ask you this. So it's going to be 2 over 3t cubed plus t squared between 0 and root 3. So it's 2 over 3 times root 3 cubed plus root 3 squared. I'm not going to bother doing the zero part because the zero part is obviously just going to be zero. Um, well, root three cubed, sometimes calculator is not very good at doing these kind of things. So I prefer to do this just slowly. Root three cubed is what? Three root three. three, root three. So it's three root three divided by three, which is just root three. So it's two root three plus three. So the area is two root three plus three. Sir? Yes. So the reason here, these limits are to do with the x-axis. And that's because it says dx here. So this part has to match these limits that you've got. Now, because we're trying to change it so that we're going to be doing it with respect to t, these need to be the t limits. So when x is 3, t is root 3. And when x is 0, t is 0. So they just have to make sure that everything completely matches up for us to be able to do this, OK? It's like when we did, uh, when else did we have to change the limits? In substitution, yeah. If you're going to be substitu if you're going to be integrating with respect to you, the limits have to be in terms of you. Otherwise, you're kind of like, you're mixing together. It's, conf it's, confus it's confusing what you're trying to compute there. So it's the same as like every time we've done parametric, you might need to step out of the x, y realm to go into the t or theta realm, and then you can then come back into it at the end. Okay, it's, you should always do it that way. I think there's obviously a, an alternative way of coming up with the Cartesian equation, but I guarantee it's going to be harder. Nine times out of ten, <laughs> which isn't a guarantee, but. It's almost, I guarantee it, some of the time. <laughs> so we'll try one uh, that's a little bit trickier now, and then we'll just do some practice for a good chunk of the lesson, OK? OK? So here. We've got a curve with these parametric equations. And we want to find um, the exact area of the region R bounded by C, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 2 and x equals 0. Okay. So you might like to just memorize this, that you're integrating y with respect to x. Oh, wait, I don't want to do it with respect to x. So I'm going to be changing it with respect to t. That's the only thing you really need to know here, which means you need to find out all of the different um, bits for that. Kind of reminds me of substitution in a way. So I'm going to differentiate this. I could either do the product rule or I could have expanded it. If I expand it, I get t plus t squared. So it differentiates to 1, 1 plus 2t. Sometimes when you've done so much integration, you sort of question whether you've done the differentiation correctly. And I should also change the limits be to begin with. I think it's much better to do that to begin with. So we're going to do x and t. Well, we've got 0 and 2 here, or 2 and 0. When x is 0, we've got to find out what t is. So we get 0 equals t 1 plus t. What does this give me for the solutions of t? Or t is minus 1. Which of these is it going to be? Zero. Why? Because of this here. So t is 0. The other one is that x is equal to 2. So you get 2 is equal to t, 1 plus t. What do I need to do for this? Yeah, I need to expand it and make it into a quadratic. 
So I get 2 equals t plus t squared. That's t squared plus t minus 2. You can either use the calculator or you can factorize. So we get t plus 2, t minus 1. So t is equal to 1 or t is equal to minus 2. But obviously, it can't be that one there and it can't be that one. So you get it's between 0 and 1. So we can now actually do the question. If we previously wanted to integrate y with respect to x between 0 and 2, it's now going to be between 0 and 1. y, which is 1 over 1 plus t, multiplied by dx dt, which is 1 plus 2t, all with respect to t. Then 1 plus t. Oh, wait, no. Mm -mm. So we're going to try and integrate 1 plus 2t over 1 plus t dt. Now this is where it gets to, this is why we wait to do parametric until the end rather than at the beginning, when we could have just told you this one right at the beginning, right? Um, how do I integrate that? You do division. Pardon? No. Reverse chain rule, no, the, the top is not derivative of the bottom. You could do substitution, but I wouldn't, I don't think that's the best one. That's integration by parts. You can't do integration by parts here. You can't do partial fractions because it's already in one fraction. Um, you could split it, but if you split it, you would get a 1 over 1 plus t and a 2t over 1 plus t. That's easy to integrate. That's not going to be easy to integrate. There's some, no one's mentioned, I don't think anyone's mentioned it. Divide it. Polynomial division, look. One of the things, if you can't do it, algebraic division. Oh, did you say that, Ronak? And I just didn't hear you. No? Now, you know this is my favorite thing in the world to do, is to do algebraic division in front of everyone. So, I'm doing, tell me if I've done this right. 1 plus 2t divided by 1 plus t. But I shouldn't have written it that way around, should I? Or does it matter? No, I should have. OK, OK. So I should have written it as 2t plus 1 and t plus 1. And I multiply it by 2, and that gives me 2t plus 2, and when I subtract that, I get minus 1. Yeah. And that's me done. Yeah? yeah? You sure? OK, so that is telling me, if I just put that little box, that it's the same thing as integrating between 0 and 1. 2 minus 1 over t plus 1 yeah. dt. Now that's dead easy to integrate, isn't it? You didn't need to. T you went through every single other thing on our memory page, apart from algebraic division. And then Hamza had to come and save the day. Just for the record, that's not this Hamza not the one who's joined the class recently. It was the other Hamza who saved the day there. Mm -hmm. And then when we integrate that, we get 2t. What does this integrate to? Ln t. Minus ln t plus 1 between 0 and 1. So when I sub in, I have 2 minus ln 2 minus 0 minus ln 1. So my answer is just 2 minus ln 2. Because obviously ln 1 is 0. I'm pleased this polynomial came up, because there was no polynomial division in the homework. The ones that we did, like as the mixture of integration stuff. I kept saying, oh, well, like polynomial division. But actually, I realized none of them in there were polynomial division. Is there another example? The next page. I've given out all my booklets. No, it's going to be practice. The, oh, yes, yeah, so this is why I've got 2 and the remainder of minus 1 over the, the previous bit that we were dividing by. So, yeah. Be warned, you will be coming across all kinds of integration for this. 
I liked, I was very, very pleased when I said, what do you think we do to integrate this? Everyone was just like, it's reverse chain rule because I've trained you well enough now to look out for reverse chain rule. But you now actually have to check to see if it's reverse chain rule. You can't just try and do reverse chain rule, okay? You actually have to try and see if reverse chain rule would work. Okay, I'll leave it on this slide. Um, we will do this, uh, we're gonna do these questions that we've got here. I've got, there's only seven questions, so we're gonna do them on the whiteboards. And then afterwards for the end bit, we're gonna do an exam question. And then that's it. We've made it to differential equations. We have got to the very end.